In the next five years, will the Carolina Hurricanes have reached a Stanley Cup final and will they have won it? I will be discussing that and more in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked on Hurricanes on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked on Hurricanes your first listen of this Monday afternoon. And where will the Carolina Hurricanes be in the next five years? Recently, we went and looked back at the past five years of how they've grown. And now I want to look ahead to the next five years of where they will be. And first up, the big one, the one that everyone wants to know about and everyone wants to talk about is will they have won a Stanley Cup final by then? That's one I'm not sure. I definitely think within the next five years, they will reach at least one Stanley Cup final. Now, Will they win it? That's a bit harder to decide. Obviously, the fan in me, you know, wants to say, yes, absolutely. They will be raising another Stanley Cup championship banner. But we all know just how difficult that can be in the NHL of, you know, I don't just let alone reaching the Stanley Cup final. Look at how good this team has been over these past five years. And, you know, they've, you know, gotten swept in the conference final twice. Like, it's really, really hard to get to the Stanley Cup final. But I do think they will uh, eventually get back there again. Whether or not they win it, that's a bit more up for debate. I think, you know, obviously, again, I'd like to think they would. Obviously, Uh, I think we all would. I would. You would. You're. And all your other Kaniac friends would want this team to win another Stanley Cup. But I think, you know, with that, that's going to be a bit more you know, situational. Like, all right, what's the roster looking like? Who's hurt? Who's not hurt? Uh, who's even on the team at that point? You know, so I think that in itself is going to be a bit more situational. But I do think that they really have, they're just on that cusp. We've said that a lot over these past few years, they're knocking on that door. They're, they're just about there. It's just that one missing piece. And we'll, we'll get into that a a bit later when we talk about uh, what the team will look like at that point. But, you know, throughout these next five years, uh, I do see the team still being a, annual playoff team it's not going to be a thing of how it was you know 10 years ago when it was like oh will they won't they when just them making the playoffs would have been a big deal you go back to that first year uh that they made it back in 2019 of just like how big of a deal it was just for them to be back in the playoffs now you know obviously it's a big deal to be in the playoffs of course not downplaying that in the slightest but that's the expectation now. Like, yeah, you know, that's expected of them. They're expected to be a playoff team now, not a team that's you know gonna be in the running for the number one overall pick in the draft lottery. They're they're not that team anymore. They're expected to be a playoff team, and these expectations are getting heavier and heavier every single year, year in and year out. Where it's not just all oh, we're just happy to be here in the playoffs. No, the expectation now is for them to be making that conference final uh, and then making the Stanley Cup final and then obviously winning it. Uh, that was my expectation for them you know, heading into this past year of just you know, getting back to the conference final, getting over that second round hump that they were struggling with and getting back there that and they met that expectation for me obviously i would have liked for it to have gone better maybe for them to win a game or two in that series rather than them getting swept uh yet again in the conference final uh but you know 
that's where they're at now. They're expected to make these deep playoff runs. That's where this team is at at this point in time. So I do think, yeah, they will get over that hump. Uh, I say it a lot of, you know, because sometimes I forget too, you know, because guys like Sebastian Ajo and Andre Sushka, that it's like they've just been around forever at this Ajo, especially. They're still, Svech is college age. He's what, 23 years old. Sebastian Ajo, he's around my age. Uh, I believe he's 26 years old, 25, 26. He's still really young. And, you know, as are a lot of the other guys on the team, like, Seth Charvis, obviously, Marty Natchez, you know, these guys that they are really looking at, you know, building, you know, long term around. Yes, Spiri Kokanyemi, another one that's locked up long term. And Piotr Kochekov, these are guys that are going to want to be around and they're going to try to surround these guys with good players, you know, so they can get to that Stanley Cup final, get past the conference final, win a game or two in it, and then eventually hoist that Stanley Cup banner. I think that's where uh, they're going to be at. They're still going to be a playoff team uh, year in and year out. That's that's not going to change. I think they will make the Stanley Cup final uh, here in the next couple years. Uh, this coming year, I, I don't know. We'll see how things go. Um, and yeah, because I really want this season to get started and really get a look at in training camp and preseason as well, of course, really get a look at, you know, what they're going to be looking like this season. Obviously, we know defensively, you know, they're sound. There's a total log jam on the defensive side of things, but offensively said it a lot. You know, they're missing that one guy, that goal scorer, and you know, we'll see how things shake out this season, whether or not they make it this year. Who knows? Obviously, I'd love it. You'd love it. Your friends and family would love it if they're Hurricanes fans, even if they're not Hurricanes fans, maybe they'll still love it. But yeah, I think they're on that cusp. I definitely think they'll get there within the next five years, whether it's this coming season. I don't know, but I do think they will get there again, whether or not they win it. I'd love to say they will. Uh, and obviously, you know, we'd all love for them to win the Stanley Cup. But I do think that this is going to be a bit more situational. But they have all the tools there to win it. I think ultimately, you'll, uh, like I said, depend on what the roster is looking like, who's healthy, who's not healthy, who's even on the team, and also who they're playing in the Stanley cup final, you know, we all know that Eastern conference is a bit stronger than the Western conference, but that could change, you know, on a whim, you never know just what teams could come out of the woodwork and, you know, surprise a bunch of people like Seattle last year. And, you know, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens there, but they have the talent there to make it to the Stanley cup final within the next five years and potentially win it. They do. And I can't wait for it to happen. Uh, I would absolutely love it. I've made a standing bet uh, with uh, Hamilton the pig and Trip Tracy that and Stormy the mascot that if, uh, you know, whenever the day comes when the Hurricanes win another Stanley Cup, I will get, uh, you know, Stormy and Hamilton drinking a storm brew added to my Hurricanes tattoo already. So, that's still there. Uh, I'd love to be able to get that added. Uh, I'm not looking forward to getting it, though, because it's on my leg and that calf tattoo really hurt. But this isn't a tattoo podcast. This is a Carolina Hurricanes podcast. And I've already talked a little bit about you know, potential roster uh, situations uh, for them making that run to the Stanley Cup final. And we will continue to dive into that in the the next segment right after this quick break folks now folks the nfl season is here finally hopefully your week one went better than mine uh but yeah if you did if it did and if it didn't yeah fanduel is one that can always make it better folks football season is here and fanduel is giving you the chance to win all season long even if your team isn't because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. So if you're betting on a team like Kansas City Chiefs or 
you know, the Cincinnati Bengals, Dallas Cowboys, whoever it may be. Every time they win in the regular season, you get those bonus bets. So just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, whether it was one of the ones I just mentioned uh, off the top of my head or another one, whether it be Jacksonville, Carolina, New England, whatever. Again, any time this team wins, you get bonus bets for every victory. And you can use those bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So right now, go visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. So go have fun, folks, and bet responsibly, please. Now, diving back on into where the Hurricanes will be in the next five years. Again, I touched a little bit on roster stuff already, but we're going to dive into that deeper here. Now, I mentioned earlier that they need that goal score. And I've talked a little bit already. Yeah, maybe you know that is someone that can come out uh, that's already on the roster now, whether it be like Sebastian Ajo, Seth Jarvis, Andre Svechkov, who, who knows. Uh, but I do feel in the next five years, they will have that goal score because it, it's getting to the point where that is clearly the thing that is holding this team back is that offense drying up in the playoffs defensively they're good goaltending that's situated now and it's just that offense they need that playmaker that guy who can provide a spark that's what they need whether they acquire him in free agency in, in a trade or again, if it's someone they already have on their books now, they are going to have that within the next five years. I think it is inevitable for that to happen. Again, who it is, your guess is as good as mine. Okay, because this is something that, you know, who knows who it could be. Again, it could be someone that's on the team already that just takes that next step and, you know, just finds that spark in their game and is just able to put it together and keep it together. That's going to be another key thing. You, know, you can't just have, you know, one season of, Oh, you have a 40 goal season or whatever. And that's, you know, the best, you know, you ever do. And you know, now you're back to like 20 goal season. No, they need that consistent offensive playmaker. That is what they need. Now, again, how they acquire them, who knows you, Again, your guess is as good as mine, but I do think that is going to be something that is definitely going to happen. And frankly, I see it happening sooner in the next five years rather than later. Whether it's something that happens this season, I'd love for it to, but I don't necessarily have high hopes as of right now because I feel like that would have been something that would have been that would have been something that was already taken care of at this point in the off season, it's September 11th. You know, it, it's at, at this point, if you're going to have acquired, you know, that offensive uh, playmaker, it, it would have already happened at this point, given there's still plenty of time between now and the deadline. And again, there has been a massive log jam there on the defensive side of things. It talked about a lot this offseason of potential trades, whether it be Brady Shea, Brett Pesci, or whoever else, Tabo Teravinen. You know, there's guys that can be moved for this to happen, for them to you know, free up cap space, free up roster space uh, for these kinds of moves. So it is something that's definitely going to happen for sure. Now, like I just mentioned, uh, I do think you know guys like Tabo Teravinen He's going to be gone. Brady Shea, Brett Pesci, I think those guys will be gone. Um, and then you, know, you also have you know, some of your older guys as well that I think you know, at you know, the end of this five-year time gap or time window will have since retired. Uh, you, guys like Brett Burns, obviously he's pushing 40. Uh, Jordan Stahl. Uh, I think you know, this is pretty much going to be his last deal. So by the time it's up, he's going to be retired. Frederick Anderson, another guy that's same age as uh, you know Jordan saw something. I forgot when I was actually making my notes here. Uh, and my girlfriend reminded me of that, that they're the same age. So honestly, 
he could be another guy that the Hurricanes potentially lose due to retirement. Auntie Ranta, you know, you know, he just signed that one year extension. So, you know, he's going to be a guy that's going to be gone. Uh, and, you know, there's so many guys on this roster that in five years time, we're not going to see, you know, uh, unless it's, you know, someone like, you know, Seth Jarvis, Sebastian Ajo, Andre Svechkov, Jesper Cook, Cammy, Martin Natich, Martin Natchez, Jacob Slavin, Piotr Kochekov. Uh, those are the guys I think yeah, they'll still be here. It's going to be the guys around them that I think yeah, we're going to be seeing new faces. Given, I'd love to be wrong. Uh, Jordan Martinuk, I know that's going to be one that make a lot of people mad, but I could potentially see him being gone in after yeah, this five-year uh, window is up. Given whether it's you know, he leaves in free agency or a trade or retires, who knows? Uh, you know, because he's one that he's a little bit younger. I believe he is late twenties, early thirties. Uh, we're gonna look to see his age, and yeah, it, it just goes. He's thirty-one years old now. So yeah, you know, at the end of this five-year gap, thirty-one uh, birthdays. You know, July twenty-fifth, uh, nineteen ninety-two. So. Yeah, 31, 32, 3, 4, 5, 6, 36 years old. Uh, so I could totally see you know, him you know, being another guy that is you know, retired at, at that point, you know, at the end of this five-year window. And this is something that you know, we just got to wait and see you know, on this stuff. It's never something you, you can really rush. You just got to go with the flow on that. Uh, and I think, you know, it getting back to guys that are going to be on that roster. I think Andre Svechnikov and Sebastian Ajo will be one of the NHL's best duos uh, in five years. You know, they already are, you know, really stinking good, but I think, you know, five years time, you know, you're going to have a lot of other guys having hung it up uh, around the league. And I think that will be when, Aho and Svech, you know, really start getting their recognition as a duo. You know, are they going to be as good as Crosby and Malkin? I don't know. You know, that's a pretty high bar to pretty high bar to clear there. But I do think they will be regarded in uh, the conversation of one of the NHL's best duos. You know, obviously you can throw Natchez in there. You can throw Jarvis in there as well. And you know, as I mentioned earlier, I do think you know, at the end of uh, Frankly, his current contract, Jordan Stahl, will retire. I'd love for him to retire with another ring, uh, but that will obviously open up a hole in the captaincy uh, seat. And I think ultimately your next captain is going to be Sebastian Ajo, and he's going to be the guy. You know, he's going to trade that A on his jersey out for a C, and it's going to be his team. And... Uh, I think you, know, you obviously you know, got you know, a couple other guys there. Really, the only other two that really I feel you know, have that chance is potentially Jacob Slavin and maybe Andre Sveshnikov. Slavin being the more likely of those two, but I do think Sebastian Aja will be the next captain of the Carolina Hurricanes uh, once Jordan Saul retires. <laughs> And that's obviously going to be a, a, the sniff was not part of that, but yeah, you know, that's obviously going to be an emotional day for, for a lot of folks. Uh, whenever he does retire, he's been here for so stinking long. You know, this extension that he just signed, you know, he, you know, just, you know, ran out the end of his 10 year deal that he had signed. And yeah, you know, this is going to ensure that he retires a hurricane. His number 11 will go in the rafters. Uh, his, he'll be in the hurricanes hall of fame. And you know that's going to be fantastic, obviously. Uh, but I do think Sebastian Ajo, he's going to be your next captain for the team. And then I mentioned him briefly early. I think Piotr Kochekov, barring you know something crazy, he is going to be the franchise goalie for the Hurricanes it, within these next five years. Uh, Ranta, he signed a one-year extension. So I think if following this season coming up is when you'll see the Anderson Kochekov duo or tandem, excuse me, uh, because Anderson signed a two year and then you'll see that. And I think potentially after 
that uh, Anderson deal is up. I mean, we'll see how things are at that point in time. But I think you know, maybe after that deal is done, that's when you see Kochekov take over that number one role. Who knows? You know who would be backing him up at that point in time. You know whether it's someone they trade for, draft, uh, free agency, whatever. That's going to be some, a bridge that we just cross when we get to it in a few years. Uh, but I do think uh, Ander, or Kochetkov will be the Hurricanes franchise goalie, barring something crazy. And now looking ahead uh, to one last uh, roster spot is that Jacob Slavin, he will finally be getting uh, in the Norris conversation. Whether or not he wins it, I don't think so. I don't think in the next five years, uh, Jacob Slavin will have won a Norris trophy. He'll uh, probably win another Lady Bing. That, that's probably going to happen. Uh, but you know, it, as far as winning a Norris, I don't think that will happen. But I do think he is going to enter that conversation, maybe be a finalist, definitely garner some more votes. Uh, because you know, it's just becoming more and more evident just how good of a defenseman he is, even though he is more of a def he is a defensive defenseman rather than an offensive defenseman, uh, which those are the ones that always win the award. You know, if you put up you know a hundred points like Eric Carlson did, you're probably going to win it. But yeah, you know, I do think he will be in the conversation uh, because the more this team does the. And the more consistent, the more they win year after year, it's just going to be harder and harder to ignore that. And, you know, you saw before Freddie uh, went down with his torn, what was it, ACL or MCL or something like that uh, in that game in Denver a couple years ago, he was on track to have a Vesna caliber season. And, you know, obviously you know, things went sideways there. He got hurt ended up not being the case so you know, the more this team is winning and the more consistently they are good year in and year out i do think slavens he's going to be in there you know we saw alex and delkovich be a calder cup or calder trophy finalist uh for the hurricanes a few years ago you know things didn't necessarily pan out the way we would have liked with that but yeah you know, that is what it is but i think eventually it's going to get to the point where you know they just have to he's gonna force uh everyone's hand uh with just how good he's playing and getting back in there obviously you're probably gonna see another all-star game appearance from him uh same with aho same with fetch i think you know natchez he's gonna get in there as well uh if he can continue to build off of the season he just had i'd love for seth jarvis to reach that as well i know all-star games a little eh, no one really tries there but it's it is still you know fun to say hey andre Svechkov was an all-star this past year and also those all-star jerseys were freaking sick but you know it's still cool to be able to say obviously rod he's still gonna be in the mix to coach the metro all-star team and speaking of rod brendan War, i do have some more thought have some thoughts on him and what his uh, situation will be with the Hurricanes in the next five years, as well as the state of the organization as a whole and how things will be going for them in the next five years. And we will dive into that right after this quick break. All right, folks, we are back and time to wrap up with what will the state of the organization look like? And I don't mean that in a bad way. By any stretch, this organization is going to be in good shape over these next five years. In the next five years, they're, they're going to be in a good shape. That's evident. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Rod Brandamore, you know, he's spearheaded a lot of this turnaround. And I believe he is entering the final year of his contract now uh, with this coming season in 2023, 2024. Um, so, yeah, he's going to come due uh, soon anyways. But I do think when he's obviously not going to go anywhere, first off, <laughs> that is not going to happen. He is not going to go anywhere. Uh, 
But I do think when that next contract hits, I do think uh, Tom Dundon and Don Waddell are going to make Rod one of the highest paid coaches in the NHL. He has absolutely earned it. Um, and there's no reason not to. Honestly, you could hand him a blank check and, you know, all right, Rod, what do you want? Okay, done. But, you know, obviously, you kind of got to guess a little bit here. I do think, you know, we'll be looking like the 3.75, 4 million range. I think you'll be looking in that range there. Maybe more on the three side of it. I think 4 million would be the ceiling. I don't think he's going to hit that 5 million uh, ceiling like uh, I believe it was the coach in L.A. did. I believe that's where it was. Uh that had had the five million salary. I don't see that happening. I wouldn't complain if it did. He's absolutely earned it. Uh, but I think we'll be more in like the three point seven five, with four being the ceiling for that. That would make him one of the top ten highest paid coaches in the league. He's absolutely earned it, plain and simple. And I think while we're on the topic of Rod Brindamore, I do think. While it's not necessarily the hurricane specific, I do think within the next five years, he's he's going to get the call from the Hockey Hall of Fame. I think it is very much like Jacob Slavin uh, continuing to get left out of the Norris conversation. It's just getting harder and harder to ignore year after year. There is more pushback every year uh, with him getting left out. Again, I still think he probably just made someone mad. But, and they won't let him in because of that. But that's purely my speculation there in my own little head cannon tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. But you know, completely aside from there, I do think uh, he will uh, get the call from the Hall of Fame uh, probably later rather than sooner. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But also wouldn't surprise me if he's not. It hasn't changed yet. <laughs> so... Why would it? But yeah, I uh, getting back, you know, to the team as a whole, I do think it will become more of a free agency destination. Now, obviously, you know, they are starting to attract bigger names, you know, whether it be you know, someone like Brent Burns with a trade, Freddie Anderson in free agency, something like that. You know, they're already doing it simply on just the fact that they're winning. But I've seen many times over the years of, you know, PNC Arena and Raleigh being one that players don't necessarily like coming to because it's out in the middle of nowhere. There's not really a whole lot around it. And that is going to be something that changes. Uh, we've already talked about it before on the show, but with the renovations to PNC Arena and development of the surrounding area that's going to make that more desirable. Uh, you know, guys are coming to visit, you know, they're going to see, Oh wow. Yeah. This arena is really stinking nice. And then, you know, they're, you know, pulling up or they're going to drive past, you know, all the, you know, whatever they end up building uh, over there. I, you know, I've speculated before, you know, I think it, for those that live in Raleigh, you know, similar to like North Hills, kind of like the, you know, sort of mixed use shopping center. Like you've got your shops and stuff like on the bottom shops, restaurants, that kind of thing. Then like apartments, office buildings above, maybe like some outdoor areas to do stuff. I think that's what you're going to be looking like there. I know over in North Hills, several players have lived there in the past. So, you know, that is a desirable thing for players. And then you have that, you know, right next to the arena. I think that would be something that works out. You know, they obviously a few years ago put the money in for the new practice facility over a weight competition center, moving out of Raleigh Center Ice, I believe it was, which was much needed. So that was already something that kind of you know helped out a little bit in that regard. So I do see them being more of a free agency destination. All that combined just with the winning ways that Rod Brindamore and company have uh, put in place with this team, they're going to be a destination for players to come to. And, you know, I do think, you know, one, something that we've talked about a lot recently, the AHL affiliate situation. Uh, obviously, as of right now, they still don't even have one. 
But I do think in the next five years, at some point, they will flat out own their own AHL team. That is extremely common nowadays for NHL teams to just own their affiliate. You know, whether it be like Boston owning Providence, uh, Vegas owning uh, Henderson, stuff like that. I fully see that being the case with the Hurricanes. And, you know, I don't see them, you know, entering another affiliation agreement, you know, like they have in the past where, you know, a couple years, oh, it's done and you know, we got to renegotiate or just, you know, you have a situation like you're in now if you just don't have one and you're scrambling to figure something out. So given I don't necessarily know uh, which teams would even be available for them to purchase, uh obviously teams like long-standing agreements with other franchises that was gonna be off the table, kind of like the Hershey Bears and the Washington Capitals. That ain't gonna happen. They ain't buying them, you know. But maybe they are able to buy some like Chicago Wolves. That's another one that's not gonna happen. They wanted to go independent, so that's not gonna happen. But I do fully see them, you know, potentially buying an AHL team outright and you know, having it, you know, in the area. Charlotte Checkers would be interesting there. Uh, they were obviously the Hurricanes affiliate for a very long time. And then that went away. I think that would be a great place to start. Honestly, with them, you don't even have to move them. You don't really have to change anything aside from the NHL team patch on the jersey. Like everything is there. Yeah, it's already, you know, decently close. Yeah, it's in Charlotte. It's about two hour drive or so, uh, which, yeah, they did that for you know, 10 years. 10 years so you know it, it's not something that wouldn't be a problem there um and you know with that one yeah you, know, you really aren't changing any branding either you know one thing you know that i do have here in my notes say the checkers are off the table and they buy you know another one wh whoever it may be uh yeah they have uh, i saw this post on social media a while back i forget who posted it, but credit to them um is they own the ice caps uh brand and ip now that could potentially be something that if they buy an ahl team and that could be something they use you know you just own that ip okay you know like really like use it use it you know rather than just like some limited run merch you know uh once a year or whatever you know uh I could potentially see that again, where they put it. I don't necessarily know. I don't see it. You know, them sharing like PNC arena or anything. Like that. I don't see that happening. Um, you know, somewhere, you know, else, you know, around maybe, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see on that. But obviously a checkers would be my favorite and my personal number one, you know, Again, you know, being a longtime fan, would love to see that affiliation come back. And you know, if they're able to just outright own them, I think that would be great. Uh, that would also be really good for like prospect development. And you know, you you just own your team. You just own it. You never have to worry uh, about anything, and you just get it done. And that is something I really would love to see happen. And or at least you know, get a long, long-standing agreement or a long-term affiliation agreement in place with someone again whether it be charlotte uh yeah we're just going to use them because they're the closest and the one kind of everyone wants uh yeah even if it's a long-term affiliation agreement you know with charlotte or whoever that would also be good as well and just have that you know steady you know for prospect development where you just don't have to worry about stuff you, know, you don't have to worry like the situation they're in right now like oh god where do we send you know, this guy where do we send that guy and because i feel like this is something that really isn't going to help their prospects you know we have the prospect uh showcase coming up and we'll talk about that more in a future episode but you're wanting to develop these guys best you can and when you don't even have an ahl uh affiliate you know, what are you, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to send this guy here, that guy there, you know, uh, obviously if they're able to share a team, you know, with someone, you know, this season, that'd be 
okay, not the most ideal situation, but it is what it is. Um, and yeah, you know, it looks like they've got ECHL affiliate back. They got things resettled with uh Norfolk Admirals. Uh, I know I probably uh made some folks in Virginia wrong with my pronunciation of Norfolk, but you know, I'm not from Virginia, I'm from North Carolina, so it is what it is, but. Yeah, that's where I think the Hurricanes will be in five years. And these are just ones that come off the top of my head. Again, I'll probably you know, be later on tonight. I'll think of some more and, you know, we could potentially do a part two. And I'd love to do a part two with where you think the Hurricanes will be in five years, whether or not it's will they win the Stanley Cup? Where will this player be? Where will that player be? Uh, the state of the organization. What will things be looking like, you know, by you know, five years time, your arena renovations are going to be done. Your uh, development of the surrounding area, that's going to be in full swing. You're probably going to have a lot of it done by then as well. What are you looking forward to with that? And so make sure you let me know, whether it be in the comments here on YouTube, whether it be over on social media at LO underscore hurricanes or at Jared Ellis underscore 96. Let me know where you think the hurricanes will be in the next five years and you know just over the course of those five years as well let me know and i will talk to you guys in the next episode folks and as always let's go canes <laughs>